SpaceX Crew-6 is launching soon with several first-time surprises. Find out more in today's episode. Three, two, one, engine full power. Welcome to Your Space Journey, where we venture into the future of space exploration. Your journey begins now. Thanks for joining me for Your Space Journey. My name is Chuck, and today we're going to talk about the upcoming SpaceX Crew-6 mission, which has many firsts, including the first UAE astronaut to fly aboard the Dragon spacecraft. The sixth SpaceX commercial crew mission to the International Space Station for NASA is scheduled to launch from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The SpaceX Dragon spacecraft, named Endeavour, made it atop a Falcon 9 rocket, will carry two NASA astronauts, Mission Commander Stephen Bowen and Pilot Woody Hoberg, along with UAE United Arab Emirates astronaut Sultan Aniadi and Roscosmos astronaut Andrei Fedayev who will join as mission specialists. During its six-month mission, Crew-6 will conduct new and exciting scientific research to prepare for human exploration beyond low Earth orbit and benefit life on Earth. Experiments will include studies of how particular materials burn in microgravity, tissue chip research on heart, brain, and cartilage functions, and an investigation that will collect microbial samples from the outside of the space station. These are just some of the more than 200 science experiments and technology demonstrations that will take place during their mission. This is the first space flight for three of the astronauts, including mission specialist Sultan Aniadi, who joins us today. Sultan will be making his first trip to space and will be the first UAE astronaut to fly on a commercial spacecraft. Once aboard the station, he will become a flight engineer for Expedition 69. Sultan was one of two people selected for more than 4,000 candidates to become the first Emirati astronauts. He went through the UAE astronaut program at the Mohammed Ban Rashid Space Center, or MBRSC. The MBRSC is a space research and development agency based in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Established in 2006, the agency is responsible for developing and operating space projects and missions in the UAE. The MBRSC has played a key role in the development of the UAE's space program, including the launch of the country's first satellite, Dubai Sat-1, and the development of the Emirati's Mars Missions Hope spacecraft. The center also conducts research and development in areas such as remote sensing, space science, and space exploration, and has partnerships with international space agencies and organizations. Your space journey. I was fortunate to speak with Sultan a few weeks ago with a few other journalists on the line in a pre-launch news conference. I, of course, first asked Sultan how his space journey began. I understand your childhood dream was to be a pilot and an astronaut. I love how you were inspired by the night sky and the animated TV series Star Blazers. I was just wondering, can you tell, a little bit, tell us a little bit more about that, how you got inspired to go into space? Well, again, you, you said that right, uh, being... Uh... A person from the UAE, specifically in uh, the city of Alain, in the 80s, uh, we could see really everything in the night sky. We see the Milky Way, stars, and I, I even remember seeing uh, a comet. I can't recall which what was the name, but I remember seeing that. It was so visible. So that was uh, probably the, the beginning uh, for me, uh, wondering whether it's possible to go to space or maybe visit other planets. And as you mentioned, uh, seeing cartoons and movies about space, that was the dream. And uh, I, I do remember f finishing high school uh, <laughs> and I wanted to be a pilot, but that was not uh, possible because I was wearing glasses. So uh, tending towards engineering and serving for almost 20 years in, in the military. Uh, and at a, an age of uh, 37, I thought it, it might be impossible to be an astronaut. But I do remember the call from um, His Highness uh, Sheikh Mohammed, Prime Minister of Dubai, when he he made an open call for everybody with capabilities and passion to uh, enroll in the first program, UAE astronaut program. I remember uh, applying uh, among uh, 4,000 applicants and uh, was lucky enough and uh, privileged enough to be selected um, along with my colleague, Hazan Mansouri. So it was a, a wonderful journey uh, so far. After the first mission, now we are talking about the second mission, a long duration. So uh, I can't be happier than this. Sultan was also asked about 
how he felt about this being the first Arab world's long duration mission and what that means for the UAE's future plans for astronauts. Thank you, Sarwat. I think this is a natural uh, progression towards uh, human space flight. Um, after a very successful mission uh, in 2019, when uh, my colleague Hazar Mansouri went to space, I think that was a big boost for um, space program overall. So I remember going to schools and universities and even talking to uh, ordinary people in the street, they all ask about space. They have questions about uh, the missions and uh, how is it uh, like to be living in space and on board the station. So again, it's a natural progression towards uh, uh, chasing uh, uh, a new goal. That's why uh, we are uh, uh, committed to this uh, six months duration mission. And um, in the future, uh, the UAE, I think, is going wherever the, the humanity overall uh, is going. Uh, we also saw the uh, successful Artemis 1 launch. It was a great proof of concept. Soon we'll have um, some people on board the Orion capsule. And uh, definitely the UAE will try to be a part of that. Uh, we all know that the UAE has uh, signed the Artemis Accord. And uh, it's a matter of a, a, an opportunity. I, ha I think we have the well, we have the support from our leadership. Hopefully, they will, will commit to this uh, uh, program, the Artemis. Um, we're looking towards, uh, hopefully, in the future, seeing uh, astronauts uh, probably orbiting or even landing on, on the lunar surface. Of course, one of the privileges of being an astronaut is you get to take some things to space sometimes. So we asked Sutan what Emirate items he'll take to space. I, th I think, um, yeah, we are lucky enough to have uh, some... I would say bags we can take to, to space with personal items. So I'm taking um, some family photos. This is important. I'm taking some toys uh, from my kids that I will, I haven't told them yet, but I'm gonna probably take some pictures uh, of that and then send it uh, down. Um, uh, I'm taking some uh, university t-shirts again. Yeah, it's something that I'm looking uh, towards taking to space. Uh, uh, sharing that uh, item with people on Earth. So I want to uh, keep that connection with people on Earth uh, using that item. And uh, uh, as I mentioned in the uh, in the brief, um, I'm taking small rockets, Tintin figure. Have you seen uh, the adventure of Tintin? Yeah, as a personal items. We also asked Sultan if he has any concerns about the effects of microgravity on this long duration mission. We have um, a rigorous training schedule. We train two hours every day to maintain the bone density and the the, the muscle density as well. So uh, hopefully uh, there will be there won't be a big of an impact on my on our bodies uh, because we have measures. Yet uh, we we will still have some uh, changes that we need to study. Actually, when we come back, that's why we're taking samples before, during, and after the mission. Your space journey. Well, it was such an honor to speak with Sultan today. I'm so excited for him and the rest of the Crew-6 astronauts. If you'd like to follow on with this mission, again, just follow it at nasa.gov. I want to thank you for joining me today. If you'd like to do me a small favor and share this episode with a friend, I'd certainly appreciate it. Thanks so much for joining me. We'll see you next time. God bless.